here at Flamingo Land. Before we bring one of our sea lions out to meet you, we'll quickly tell you about the four animals we have here. We've got four California sea lions, quite a common species. They're found all the way along the west coast of America, not just in California. They're actually seen as far north as Canada, as far south as the Gulf of Mexico. They're doing really well, as we said, not endangered, so that's why we've only got four males here. They do also breed very successfully in zoos, so if we had any females within a few years, we could be overrun with baby sea lions. They are great animals to work with, a lot of fun, real characters, will hopefully prove to you how clever they are. The two that were in the pool a moment ago are having a bit of a break this afternoon. That's Marvin, our 12-year-old, and our youngster Miguel, who's six. You've got to meet the other two. First of all, Merlin will join us, he's eight, and then later on we're going to bring out the big fella, he's called Clive, he's 19. Now Merlin's waiting back here, so we'll bring him out onto the stage. He arrived here when he was 18 months old. Three of our four sea lions, including Merlin here, were bred in the UK. The little one, Miguel, he was bred in Barcelona Zoo. This one joined us from Longleat when he was just a pup. He was about that big from nose to tail when he arrived. He weighed about 20 kilos. He now, at the age of eight, weighs almost 100 kilos. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. He's also got a bit of a cold, yes. <laughs> he now weighs about 100 kilos, but he's far from fully grown. When he first arrived here, he wasn't trained at all. All he did was swim, eat fish, and try to bite me. These animals will bite if they feel nervous or threatened. But he now knows me and trusts me, so he's not aggressive anymore. In fact, he's quite friendly. Do I get a kiss? Thank you, very kind. These animals are easy to teach and train. They have a similar level of intelligence to dogs, a similar sized brain. You can teach them to respond to your voice, you can train them to respond to a whistle, you can train them to respond to different hand signals too. For example, if you all stick an arm in the air and wave at him, you might get a wave back. Come on, everybody. Look at that, we like to see that. Give everyone a big wave, Merlin. There you go, you can see there. He's got those massive, powerful front flippers, which of course they used to swim. These animals feed on fish, squid, eel and octopus. So they need to be fast in the water to catch that food. The front flippers propel them, the back flippers help them to twist and turn. They act a bit like the rudder on a boat. You can see he's got a long streamlined body shape so he can glide through the water very fast with minimum drag or resistance. The outer coat is actually fur. They appear quite smooth and slippery when wet. They are actually furry. That fur keeps them warm in very cold water. They've got loads of upper body muscle, loads of muscle in the chest and the shoulders. So they can learn to stand on their front flippers. Merlin's not brilliant at this yet, but we'll give it a try. If he does manage to hold all his weight on the front flippers, you've got to give him a round of applause. Are you ready? Take a deep breath. Up you go. You can do it. Whoa, that was quite good. Give yourself a clap. Yes, not bad. Not bad at all. Yes, he likes to join in with a clapping too. Yeah, we are always teaching the sea lions from the moment they arrive here. They're always learning. We give them different toys to play with. We just keep them active. Basically, you need to do that. If you leave them to just swim around all day, they get bored rather fast. And when boredom sets in, behavioural problems can develop. So we just keep them active. You can give them some hoops to play with. At first, we just let Merlin play with these in the pool. And that kept him occupied for a couple of days. Then we taught him to retrieve the hoops. So basically, I throw five hoops in the pool. He has to bring them back. Really simple. You've got to start with something very easy. And then move the exercises on when the animal's gaining confidence. To train this, you simply reward them when they bring the hoops back. This is how we do all the training. It's called positive reinforcement. When I get the hoops back, he gets a piece of fish, a pat on the back, and a round of applause. Very, very simple. That's it. Good point, Merlin. Thank you. Yeah, positive reinforcement, simple training technique. The best reward is usually a piece of fish, but uh, the reward doesn't have to be food. Just giving them a pat on the back, saying, well done, good boy. Like a dog, they love that attention from the trainer. And after just a few times on stage, they start to associate clapping with doing something correctly. So believe it or not, when you clap, you're actually helping us to encourage him. He can catch the hoops. He's got to catch them over his long neck. Of course, they're, they are naturally good at catching because they've got to catch fish to survive. Of course, they catch fish in their mouth. He's got to catch these over his head. A bit different, but the same skills are required. Concentrate, Merlin. This requires a little bit more skill. Well caught. For some reason, he always has to look over his shoulder to check he's caught the hoop. I don't know why because it's just gone over his head. Whoops, that was a good catch. Well done. Keep watching. You can see how long that neck is. That helps them to catch fish in the wild. They swim up behind a fish, and they strike out that long neck <laughs> to make the catch. Last one. Give him a round of applause. Well done, Merlin. Yeah, you've got the lot. You don't have to check. We are always making the tasks more and more difficult, though. He now finds catching the hoops like that pretty simple. So we're going to flip them. When we flip them, he's got to 
adjust his head at the last second in order to catch them. So we're testing not only his vision here, but his reflexes. Speaking of vision, these animals have what we call binocular eyesight. That's the same as you and me. It means they've got two eyes facing forward. So he can judge movement very well, and he can react at the last second to catch the hoops like this. It's much harder. If he gets all five, he's done really well. You're nearly there. Last one. Perfect. Great catching. Very skillful. Now something else we train when they're very young is an exercise called targeting. Again, pretty easy. This was actually the first thing Merlin learned to do when he joined us from Longley. We use a target, which is basically just a stick. It's got a yellow spot on one end, as you can see. These animals don't see in colour vision like we do, but they see the colour yellow well. So we've got a yellow spot on the end of the stick. All we do is reward them when they touch it with their nose. Very simple. At first, they don't want to touch it because they don't know what you're going to do with it. So I had to stand here like this for about four hours one day and wait for him to come out of the pool. Because they are naturally very inquisitive, he eventually came out of the water and after about five hours he came over to see what was in my hand. The moment he put his nose anywhere near the spot, he got a piece of fish. And instantly, he put his nose on the spot again to get another piece of fish. And this went on for about half an hour. After half an hour, he just sat there with his nose on the spot. Uh, after a further half hour, he started to do this. He just started to follow it with his nose. Really simple. And it's all just done using that encouragement. After a while, they'll follow the target anywhere. So it kind of acts a bit like a lead. Now, if I want him to follow me around the stage, I just need this in my hand. He follows that spot with his nose absolutely anywhere, as you can see. You can teach other animals to do this too. Dogs, dolphins. I have, in fact, trained a fish to follow a target. It can be done if you've got too much spare time on your hands like me. You can also teach them to lay down with the target by just placing the target on the floor. Getting them to lay down is easy. Getting them to lay still is the difficult part. Yeah, Merlin doesn't like sitting still for any length of time, but he has to when the vet comes to visit. We train them to do this before they're trained to wave or clap. They just have to relax on the stage so we can check them all over the body. We do this with all the sea lions every day, so they're used to this contact. They don't mind when we uh, check them all over, and they don't mind when the vet comes to visit either. He just stands where I'm standing, and he can check them like that. Hop back up there. Simple training, but very useful. Earlier on, you saw him standing on his front flippers. Well, that's trained using the target too. If you want to teach them to stand on the front flippers, it's really easy, actually. You put the target in front of them, they lean forward to touch it, and that transfers the body weight onto the flippers like that. And he held that perfectly. Well done, Merlin. Much better. Now, he is a sea lion. So-called because the male or bull animals develop a mane around the neck. As we said, it's fur covering most of the body. And eventually, in the very late stages of life, the fur around here, here will thicken out just slightly to form a mane. That's the only thing these animals have in common with lions. That's where the similarity ends. As we said, they're quite similar to dogs. They're also closely related to bears and otters too. But their closest relatives are creatures called walruses, then seals, and then these awkward animals called fur seals. Along with sea lions, they make up the pinniped family. Uh, the pinniped, by the way, is Latin for winged foot, a reference to the flippers, of course. Now, you can often distinguish walrus because they're quite uh, distinguishable, to say the least. Quite obvious when you spot a walrus, but people do confuse sea lions with seals. The easy way to tell them apart is to look at the flippers, because sea lions have massive front flippers. Seals don't. A seal swims using the back end of the body instead. They hardly use the front, front flippers at all in the water, so they're not that big. If he was a seal, his front flipper would be about the size of my hand. So you can see there's quite a difference. Also, seals have claws on each front flipper. Claws which are used for scratching. Sea lions don't have claws on the front flippers. They actually have them on the back flippers instead. Another difference, the ears. If you look on the side of Merlin's head, in fact on the side of any sea lion's head, no matter what the species, they have these little things that stick out, tiny ear flaps, known as pinna. Now, seals don't have those. They do have ears, but a seal's ear is just a little hole on the side of the head. So if the ears stick out, you know it's a sea lion. They walk in different ways too. Now, we normally use the target to get him to follow me around, but I don't need to anymore. He'll just follow me around the stage. You can watch how he moves around. The back flippers tuck underneath. The front flippers bend in the middle, carrying the body weight off the ground. So he can lift his whole body up onto the flippers to move. Sea lions can run. They can jump. They can climb. They can move pretty fast. 
A seal can't walk around like that. Merlin is going to do his fantastic seal impression for you now. He's actually never met a seal before, but he knows how they move, and it is a bit like this. They sort of wriggle a lot on their belly like that. They can't get up and walk on flippers because they are simply too small to stand or walk on. And if anyone tells you they saw a clapping seal, they didn't. The seal's flippers don't meet in the middle. Only sea lions can clap. There you go. Very good, Nelly. But then, you always get an exception. Just when you thought you knew the difference between a sea lion and a seal, we have to point out one awkward creature. It's called a fur seal. Yes, and a fur seal isn't actually a seal at all. You've guessed it. A fur seal is a type of sea lion. But that's where it all gets a bit confusing, so we'll move on. We're going to do a back flip next. Merlin, this is a good demonstration of speed and flexibility. He's got to throw his whole body head over tail in the middle of the pool. These animals are fast in the water, they're also flexible. Their spine is much more flexible than our own. So they can change direction quickly. Wait in the corner. He gets very excited about this for some reason. Are you ready, Merlin? We want to see a back flip in midair. Go! Three, two, one! Whoa, look at that, a tight turn, very quick indeed. And that shows you just how fast these animals can twist. Give yourself a clap, I like that, that was a good one, it was. In fact, it was so good, we'll do an action replay. And this exercise takes a lot longer to train than those you've seen so far. It actually took about two years of practice every day for him to get really good at this. And again, it's trained using the target, by circling the target above the water about 15,000 times we calculated, you eventually get this response. Of course, a sea lion can do this straight away. They can do it from birth. They just don't realize they can do it until we show them. And that's what takes time. Are you ready? One more action replay, go! Three, two, one! Another good one. That was, again, a very tight turn. Give him another round of applause. I like that, really. Thank you. Now, no sea lion show would be complete without some balancing. Sea lions have been doing this for years, it's a bit of a cliché. All around the world in shows just like this, you see sea lions doing this. But, oh, be careful, well done. <laughs> but people very rarely explain how they do it. And the way they do this, I think, is extremely clever. This is nothing to do with vision. He's not watching the ball. He could do this with his eyes closed. In fact, to balance, he's using his whiskers to help him. The whiskers aren't strong enough to move the ball or hold the ball but they are very, very sensitive. He can feel the ball with his whiskers. If it moves just a millimetre in any direction, it presses gently down on the whiskers. That way he knows which way to move his head. But it takes a long time for them to grasp this. Some, it takes a long time. Some actually never learn this skill. We've got one here called Clive, who you're going to meet in a minute. He's been practicing this now for 17 years, and he can't do it. <laughs> Um, but that just goes to show they're all different in their levels of intelligence. People frequently ask us how long does it take to train them. Well, you can't answer that. It took Merlin a couple of years to get really good at this, but one of our sea lions, Marvin, picked it up in a matter of weeks. So their levels of skill are all very different. Merlin now finds this easy, though. Doesn't test his skill anymore, so we're going to make it harder by... Oh, you want a clap to you? Okay. Very good. You deserve it. We're going to see if he can swim and balance at the same time. This is something he couldn't do a couple of years ago. He can get across the pool with the ball on his nose and back to where he is now. You have to be facing the audience. And the ball is not allowed to fall off his nose once he's lifted it out of the water. So he's got to concentrate on the ball all the time. He's got to use those whiskers. The difficult bit is getting up onto the stand and then turning to face the audience. He's done it, look at that. You're getting too good at that now. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. We have to find something else for him to learn now. You've done very well, have a whole herring. But on that note, he's going to wave goodbye. He'll be back out in a few minutes, along with his best mate Marvin and little Miguel. They'll all be out in the pool together at the end of the show. But for now, give him a clap as he disappears. Thank you, Merlin. He's done pretty well. Bear with me one moment. He is now in the other pool where he can now relax. <laughs> Clive is about to join us. Now, if you've been to Flamingo Land in the past, you may have met this sea lion before. He spent a few months with us here 